my preamp but um but anyway here's the guitar without the preamp sounds pretty good anyway and welcome to my living room studio such as it is and um good morning in australia good evening in europe good afternoon the east coast of north america Good, yeah, good afternoon everywhere in North America, outside of, outside of uh, Alaska. Good morning to Alaska. <clears throat> Let's see here. So, um, I'll do this song because, um, they arrested somebody in uh, Paris for uh, being one of the folks who cut Jamal Khashoggi into pieces and killed him in the embassy, the, the Saudi embassy in Istanbul. And, uh, and now the uh, British courts are apparently any day now going to be announcing whether... Julian Assange should be extradited to the United States to face 175 years in prison for doing the same kind of journalism that Jamal Khashoggi was so hated for by the Saudi state. And the Saudi state, of course, had intentions to kill him, as they did. And the U.S. authorities also have intentions to kill Julian Assange, as has been become very clear by a lot of recent revelations in a lot of different media and of, among various intelligence agents who are now being pursued by the U.S., uh, their former employers. Of course, if they, if they are not telling the truth, then why do their employers care that they're talking about the fact that the CIA wanted to kill Julian Assange on the streets of London? You are wanted by a nation, not run by the rule of law. If senators and generals had so often made the call that he should be hit with a missile, they'd said it on TV. What would you expect from a legal authority? Asked to extradite him back to this country. If his name were Jamal Khashoggi. He were wanted by a nation which had sent its spies to arrange a situation where he accidentally dies. If they had secretly listened in on all his conversations, if they had explicitly made plans for his assassination, would you write it off as just a strange conspiracy? 
אפס מימות שמר קשה וגשי. They were wanted by a nation they so frequently condemn in human rights tribunals held at the UN for torturing their prisoners for the ways they are confined. If the state had a different name, would justice be so blind? Would your courts just hand him over, take him from his family? If his name were Jamal Khashoggi. If his name wanted by a nation which committed the war crimes exposed by this reporter so many times. Would you just take the word of the head of state who said he would be so happy to see a bullet in his head? If their main witness was coerced, would you send them to that country? If his name were Jamal Khashoggi. were wanted by a nation that did all these things and more if it were Iran or Russia would you be keeping score would you trust their prosecutors all the nice things that they say about their justice system before they take him away what if his name were Julian would you send him across the sea if his name were Jamal Khashoggi if he were wanted by a nation not run by the rule of law. Did you guys hear okay? The guitar and the voice came through all right and all that? Or should I turn the guitar down a little bit maybe? So, let's see. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, um, apparently going to be going in, in February to, um, uh, Scandinavia, assuming, you know, Omicron doesn't, uh, change everything too dramatically over the next few weeks. So if you happen to be in Denmark or Norway or Iceland, I'll be there in uh, February and early March, looks like. A little song about some Danish history for you. It was in the 1970s. Oh, let's try a different... Uh, different... In the 1970s, the fuel crisis had begun. Choices were presented to us as if we had none. Let's see. Doing it in a different rhythm and different key. Let's try that in 4-4. Four, four. It was in the 1970s, the fuel crisis had begun. Choices were presented to us as if we had none. Leaders of industry said they could solve the problem by mastering the power of the radioactive atom. Some folks in western Jutland got a notion in their heads. They thought there might be something they could offer up instead. A few hundred people gathered at a little place called Twind and declared their will to harness the power of the wind. We're gonna build the biggest windmill in the world. We're gonna build the biggest windmill in the world. There were many who said their science wasn't sound, that such a mighty windmill would simply topple to the ground. Some of them were scientists, the vast majority were not. But they knew with years of effort, you could do a lot. Word about the project spread far and wide. A hundred thousand visitors came to help and to advise. Till one day these windmill builders drove in with a crane and lifted up their giant wings with a mighty chain. 
We're going to build the biggest windmill in the world. We're going to build the biggest windmill in the world. When Twincraft was completed, it reached up to the sky. Its wings churned in the air. At 54 meters high, the critics all fell silent. No one now was jeered, as even industry agreed. This was some damn fine engineering. The wind regaled Jutland from the North Atlantic Sea, as it was seamlessly converted into electricity. It was power for the people, leukemia for none, when they declared in Denmark, just south of the midnight sun. We're gonna build the biggest windmill in the world. We're gonna build the biggest windmill in the world. They gave away the patents. They said knowledge should be free. And their plans were copied by a newborn industry. Soon Denmark would be known as a windmill building nation. And it all started with some hippies at the Twincraft power station. Debates were held in Parliament about which way things should go. Build a nuclear reactor, the majority said no. It could have gone quite differently. In much of the world it did. Except for those in Ulfborg who said we're getting off the grid. We're gonna build the biggest windmill in the world. We're gonna build the biggest windmill in the world. We're gonna build the biggest windmill in the world. We're gonna build the biggest windmill in the world. Flaming Lips. No, I don't. I've no, I've heard of the Flaming Lips, but I have no idea what they sound like. And hello, Adrian in Monterey. Wonderful. Meiko. And I'll have to do a song about Mexico then. But first, this request from Camelita. This machine is dangerous. It communicates. It can carry memes that can destabilize a state. It can carry rumors, whether true or not. It can sow discord like an agent or a bot. It can bring people together. It can unify. Or it can spread half-truths and lies. This machine is dangerous. It can light a fire. There may be no limit to what it can inspire. Bring a person to the edge of sanity and back. It can mobilize a mob to attack. It can fire ammunition with each swing of a pick. Faster than Jackie Chan can kick. This machine is dangerous. It's locked and loaded. Each string is a grenade. That hasn't yet exploded because it exists here in the world on the net. Whether it's on Twitch or on your TV set, with words ideas can spread. Each one a potential bullet in the head. This machine is dangerous. It can make you dance. It can make you feel like maybe you have a chance. It can sell a brand of ketchup. It can save your soul. It can create division if division is the goal. It can build a movement or it can call it out. Of one thing at least there is no doubt. This machine is dangerous. Let's see here.
Well, I know I've done this song a few times before, but somebody is watching from Monterey. So this is for Adrian. My name is John Riley. I'll have your ear only a while. I left my dear home in Ireland. It was death, starvation, or exile. When I got to America, it was my duty to go. Enter the army and slog across Texas to join in the war against Mexico. It was there in the pueblos and hillsides that I saw the mistake I had made. Part of a conquering army with the morals of a bayonet blade. So in the midst of these poor dying Catholics, screaming children, the burning stench of it all, Myself and two hundred Irishmen decided to rise to the call. From Dublin City to San Diego, we witnessed freedom denied. So we formed the St. Patrick Battalion, and we fought on the Mexican side. We formed the St. Patrick Battalion, and we fought on the Mexican side. Marched neath the green flag of St. Patrick, emblazoned with Erin Golbra. Bright with the harp and the shamrock, and Libertad para Republica. Just fifty years after Wolf Tone, five thousand miles away, the Yanks called us a legion of strangers, and they can talk as they may. But from Dublin City to San Diego, we witnessed freedom denied, so we formed the St. Patrick Battalion, and we fought on the Mexican side. We formed the St. Patrick Battalion, and we fought on the Mexican side. Five major battles. Churubusco was the last. Overwhelmed by the cannons from Boston, we fell after each mortar blast. Most of us died on that hillside in the service of the Mexican state. So far from our occupied homeland, we were heroes and victims of fate. From Dublin City to San Diego, we witnessed freedom denied. So we formed the St. Patrick Battalion, and we fought on the Mexican side. From Dublin City to San Diego, we witnessed freedom denied. So we formed the St. Patrick Battalion, and we fought on the Mexican side. We formed the St. Patrick Battalion, and we fought on the Mexican side. Uh, lovely to see these comments. Uh, Vanguard, oh my goodness, I really needed to work on that. Maybe I could do it. Maybe I haven't, I haven't played it in so long. But it's a very good suggestion. It is very relevant. My most recent piece in Counterpunch, in case anybody wants to read my prose, is um, is um, basically about, uh, about uh, sectarianism and... Um, how it would be nice if we could communicate. And I have another one coming up on the same subject. And um, uh, Lucy, wonderful to see you pop up there on the internet as well. And I was, um, I was singing in a wonderful school in Belfast. There's a wonderful Irish language school in West Belfast, right near the Connolly Center, which has fine espresso drinks as well as great stuff on the walls. And this is a song that uh, went over well among the kids for Anti-Bullying Week. 
I went to play at the playground To do things I like so much Run with my friends, play make-believe Swing on the swings and such But this morning I went to the playground And bullies were guarding the swings They knocked over the slide Dumped out the sandbox Took away all of our things This playground is run by bullies And they're all so big and mean But this playground was made for all of us And we're gonna change this scene Well, all of us were scared of the bullies they were so big and we were so small Till somebody said if we organized We could be ten feet tall We stood on each other's shoulders Put blankets over our heads We looked like monsters and we roared like lions And those bullies ran home and hid under their beds This playground was run by bullies they're all so big and mean But this playground was made for all of us And we're gonna change this scene Well, we got that playground back But then we looked across the street Saw the sewage plant belching out smoke Poison the ground under our feet It's giving us all asthma And the hour is getting late So we marched across the way And we blocked that factory gate Cause this world is run by bullies And they're all so big and mean but this world was made for all of us And we're gonna change this scene This world is run by bullies And they're all so big and mean But this world was made for all of us And we're gonna change this scene Lovely. I mean, lovely, the comments, I'm, you know, who knows what people think I mean when I say lovely in a time like that, but it's, uh, it's nice to see these comments. Belfast, Connecticut, Australia, Austria, wonderful to see you all out there. And the one in Belfast is a student at that wonderful school. Could, could just do songs about the walls in that school. Canada. Excellent. Yes, and the familiar complaints about the left constantly losing everywhere. I know. I agree. It's a problem. I think... Uh, yeah, it's been a problem for a long time. Oh, yeah. Kian, next time, I'd love to play with your bazooki. Or play with you and your bazooki. You play the bazooki, and I'll play with you. How about that? Um, banjo. You play the banjo. I'll play the guitar. Or the mandola. And um, I think I, I think I did this song on the mandola last week, but I'll do it on the guitar. It's just um, with all the protests going on around um, Europe. I mean, the next thing I'm uh, public, the next essay I'm just finished writing is on the subject of trying to communicate with folks who are who are having these anti-mandate, anti-lockdown protests and stuff 
because uh, whatever we think of uh, folks um, uh, who might be prioritizing individual liberties or not being surveilled by the state over things like controlling a pandemic, it's a sticky subject for sure. But, um, you know, the, denouncing these folks as members of the far right is not helpful, especially when it's not accurate in so many cases which i know it's not accurate because i know these people they're part of my orbit um in no small way and uh or i'm in their orbit or whatever and of course some of them are lying in the hospital beds dying right now and this is about one of them could be any number of people they lied about the wars Took time to figure out that democracy and freedom was not what it was about. They said we'd fight the terrorists, but all that I can see was I was occupying someone else's country. They lied about the weapons. They all were so convinced the generals on the TV haven't heard from them since. They say it was an accident, but I think it was their plan. They spread the lie on CNN and NPR and C-SPAN. They lied about the jobs all the pundits used to say before the city was abandoned and the good jobs went away. Sign up to this free trade bill, win-win all around. Now half the guys I used to know are six feet underground. seem to do looking at us on TV they pretend they care but it's all about the money which anyone can tell if you have half a brain why I should believe them now it just seems insane talk turn to the virus what we all stood to lose I was not the only one who thought it was fake news I just went about my life like I know it would do maybe I'll catch a cold I thought or a little flu so much i wish it were not true but from this hospital bed if i could just click undo i guess i would have worn a mask stayed home the quarantine instead of being intubated hooked up to this machine you can say that i'm an idiot maybe i don't know but before i take my leave before i have to go before they stick me in a box with quarters on my eyes there's lots of blame to go around here and i know where it lies they lied about the wars. Kurt Windhuber is talking about the neo-Nazis running the um, leading the protests, uh, the anti-lockdown protests in Austria. And yeah, it's, um, to me, it's a question of, um, not who's leading them, but who's attending them. And can we communicate with those who are not neo-Nazis, which is a large number of the protesters in all these different countries. I'm sure Austria is no exception there, unless the non-Nazi protesters are scared to go to the protests led by Nazis, but there's a whole lot of non-Nazis in these protests, I guarantee, all over the world. And, um, yeah, they, uh, we need to not call non-Nazis Nazis. Because the Nazis are generally proud to be a Nazi. Like, people who are fascists, you know, they, they, they have a certain kind of, you know, commitment to the idea of fascism, just like socialists and anarchists often have commitment to the ideas of socialism and, fasc and anarchism. And so, you know, <clears throat> people who are socialists are often proudly calling themselves socialists, just like national socialists proudly call themselves national socialists. We don't need to call people national socialists if they don't call themselves national socialists. We can call them something else, like something that might be more accurate, you know, unless they are actually, you know, proud Nazis, as I say. 
there's no shortage of those. So, yeah, let's see here. How about a song about another pandemic? Was raging like the earth has never seen a whole generation lined up in trenches with killing machines but aside from a few islands and some mountain peaks the pandemic killed more people in just 24 weeks where it began speculation's gone on for years the trenches of europe is where the deadly strain appears from packed trains and hospitals around the globe it spread this war strain of the virus that left so many dead the death toll was unequal but barely anywhere was left untouched though the greatest share of dying was reserved for the poorest colonies of the empires and their wars that created this disease. If you have a couple hours, then do something with me. Conduct a little research into your family tree. If you look into it, it won't take long. Quite likely you will find in 1918, you left an ancestor behind. knew no borders it went from the front lines which had increased its deadliness as if by design it circled the whole planet so many people died they dug mass graves everywhere put your relatives inside the world war was raging like the earth has never seen a whole generation lined up in trenches with killing machines but aside from a few islands and some mountain peaks the pandemic killed more people in just 24 weeks. Putting forward the kind of politics that solved the crisis. That's the main thing, rather than opposing people who are putting out the wrong politics. That'll just get us where we are now. Losing, losing, losing all the time. Decades losing. When is the left going to figure it out? Got to actually have a plan. Anybody can react. I'll do this song. Never goes out of style. I don't drive a car because they run on gas, but if I did, it'd run on biomass. I ride a bike or sometimes a skateboard, so fuck off all you drivers and your yuppie hordes. Sitting all day in the traffic queues, I'm a better anarchist than you. I don't eat meat. 
I just live on moldy chives or the donuts that I found in last week's dumpster dives. Look at you people in that restaurant. I think you are so sad when you could have been eating bagels like the ones that I just had. I think it is a shame all the bourgeois things you do. I'm a better anarchist than you. I don't wear leather. And I like my clothes in black And I made a really cool hammock From a moldy coffee sack I like to hop on freight trains I think that is so cool It's so much funner doing this Than being stuck in school I can't believe you're wearing Those brand new shiny shoes I'm a better anarchist than you I don't have sex And there will be no sequel Because heterosexual relationships Are inherently unequal I'll just keep on moshing to anti-flag and crass until there are no differences in gender, race, or class. All you brainwashed breeders, you just haven't got a clue. I'm a better anarchist than you. I don't believe in leaders. I think consensus is the key. I don't believe in stupid notions like representative democracy. Whether or not it works, I know it is the case that only direct action can save the human race. So when I see you in your voting booth, then I know it's true. I'm a better anarchist than you. I am not a pacifist. I like throwing bricks. And when the cops have caught me and I've taken a few licks, I always feel lucky if I get a bloody nose because I feel so militant and everybody knows. By the time the riot is all through, I'm a better anarchist than you. I'm a better anarchist than you. Let's see here. You know, this is the only time I ever sing songs. It's every Wednesday at noon here, so I figured I should do it, even if I'm just singing the same songs over and over again. But... Somebody said, don't mourn, organize. I'm going to do a song about that. Mm -hmm. What's the right key? you all for a thousand years, yet you hail us still unfed. There's never a dollar of all your wealth but hails the workers dead. You have taken our lives and our jobs and our pride and we're told it's your legal share. If blood be the price of your lawful wealth, Good God, we have paid it fair. There's never a mind blown skyward now. We're buried alive for you. There's never a wreck drifts shoreward now, but we are its ghastly crew. Go reckon our dead by the forges red and the factories where we spin. If blood be the price of your cursed wealth, good God, we have paid it in.
fed you all for a thousand years Yet that was our doom, you know From the days when you chained us in your fields To the strike of a week ago You have taken our lives and our jobs and our pride And we're told it's your legal share if blood be the price of your lawful wealth, good God, we have paid it fair. Behind the barricades? Sure thing. For me none in Nebraska. When the world has gone crazy and it's all becoming clear When they're gunning down our comrades and it seems the end is near As they're loading up the launchers for the tear gas grenades We can take off our bandanas and kiss behind the barricades When it's madness all around and you can see this at a glance we will sing and we will cry, we will laugh and we will dance. As they shout their marching orders beneath the helicopter blades, we shall seize the moment for a kiss behind the barricades. They will try to break our spirit, and at times they may succeed, but our love for the world is stronger than their greed. When the building is surrounded and hope begins to fade, in my final hour, a kiss behind the barricades. As the movement grows, there will be hills and bends, but at the center of the struggle are your lovers and your friends. And the more we hold each other up, the less we can be swayed. Here's the love and solidarity, and a kiss behind the barricades. Well, let's see here. How about this? It's, um, I guess there's no volcanoes currently spewing in Iceland, but we're going to go visit one at some point when I'm there at the beginning of March and uh, the Icelandic environmental movement began on one midnight in uh, 1970 in August with an explosion, at least that's what they say there. Maybe the movement began before that, but somebody had to set the, you know, detonate the thing in the first place, right? Beside a volcano, the rising ash, a crystal river rushing past, a crystal river flowing free, now again like it used to be. Since now the dam is out of sight Blown apart by dynamite Blown apart by everyone In the land of the midnight sun There was a black hundred farmers The next day called the cops So they could say If you're looking for one to blame a hundred farmers gave their names gave their names said it was I who couldn't just stand idly by we all knew that sometimes you must commit a crime there was a blast a booming sound and the dam came crashing down Reykjavik, voices shrill, said the dam should be bigger still. By the Laksa riverside, 
A hundred farms would be washed aside. Legal efforts, protests failed, but they still had air behind their sails. They had air and dynamite, so they gathered round late one night. There was a blast, a booming sound, and the dam came crashing down. Prosecutors tried to choose which farmers had lit the fuse, but not a one would tell the tale. Not one farmer went to jail. The dam was never built again, and many still remember when. By the Loxa River, they set things right with a couple sticks of dynamite. There was a blast, a booming sound, and the dam came crashing down. There was a blast, a booming sound, and the dam came crashing down. So, um, yeah. Oh, for those of you in Austria, by the way, um, or Germany, or the Lowlands, or Switzerland, I'll be, I'll be also in Europe in late April and early May, um, flying into Frankfurt on April 18th and flying out on May 24th. So I'll be doing gigs around that part of the world as well as in Denmark around then, I think, May Day. Usually I'm in Denmark. But I don't have anything booked yet. Working on it. Um, February in Denmark. Early March in Iceland. Probably Norway in there too. So anybody around there, talk to me. If you want to. And um, I've missed three May Days in a row. Um Oh, Frankfurt, uh, Frankfurt, the big, the main, the main, the main one, the one uh, in the West, that one, that Frankfurt, with the big international airport in it. But I often got confused by that in on the GPS, trying to figure out which Frankfurt I'm going to, so thank you. <laughs> Year on the first of May, known around the world as International Workers' Day, you'll still see people marching in every corner of the earth. St. John de Santiago, Kerala to Perth, all keeping alive the fantasy of what can happen down the line when the workers of the world combine. see us gathering early in the morn. Some are celebrating the shackles we have shorn. While so many billions are just waiting for the moment that we might stop losing the class war. When someday we can all say, yeah, we're doing fine. When the workers of the world combine. When that time arrives, 
Maybe it looks like May Day, like a festival that comes home and doesn't go away. Every race and gender, every walk and station, with the working class united, every land and nation. Then just watch what happens when we follow the same sign. When the workers of the world combine. The fifth month of the year, on the 1st of May, known around the world as International Workers' Day. I'll do this one that, let's see here. This one that has just been alluded to by Carne and um, Corne, Corne, Corne. There's a word, I, a, a name I've never come across before, which happens to me regularly. But Corne, your your last name makes more sense. Is that oh Cornelius? Okay, then I have heard of that name. In the middle of the hoof. Is that like uh, ancestral people who worked with horses? Like so many of us. What is that last name? Like with with last names like uh, Smith, right? How many blacksmiths? Have there been in history? <laughs> yeah, blacksmith. Let's see. So, yeah, one of the places I'm hoping to go in February is actually uh, the little town of Bodo in Norway, which is uh, near where the granddaughter of the woman whose this song is about lives. And uh, we're working on convincing the Red Party in Norway that they really want to sponsor a show in Bodo. So if you happen to be know anybody in Bodo, which I'm probably even pronouncing wrong, but however you say that, town, and you know anybody from the Red Party, tell them they really want to sponsor a gig of mine in February there. And just You could just make the suggestion, you know. Maybe just like while somebody's sleeping, you know. They'll wake up and they'll think, ah. Oh, David Rovix, that's what I need to do. Katarina Jakob, long before she took that name, was organizing workers in Hamburg just the same. Organizing beneath the flag of deepest red, a new dawn of peace and freedom clearly shining in her head. Katarina Jakob first was sent to jail when the trappings of democracy all began to fail she was frequently arrested in and out of custody while her first husband was in hiding from the nazis katarina jakob was acquitted of a crime but the gestapo had the last word they weren't finished with her this time she was sent to ravensbrook a killing hunger at her side she heard of the execution, how her second husband died. For Katarina Jakob, the end was close at hand. She was on a death march with a ragged starving band. Marching through a forest, being led by the SS. What would happen hours later seemed impossible to guess. When the sun rose the next morning, it was the first of May. And they all sang the Internationale. They all sang the Internationale. Katarina Jakob thought about her children and the friends and comrades taking care of them. Not knowing yet if any of them survived, not knowing that soon she'd see her daughters both alive. Katarina Jakob watched the German soldiers fleeing, streaming from the east, that's what she was seeing. 
Allied bombers flew above them. She thought they all might die. And then soon there was the silence of all the SS men. When the sun rose the next morning, it was the first of May, and they all sang the Internationale. They all sang the Internationale. Katerina Yakov saw red flags flapping in the breeze above the Russian tanks as she fell upon her knees. And so many different voices in so many different tongues sang the most beautiful song that could ever have been sung. In German, Lithuanian, in Polish and in Dutch, a myriad of melodies as never had been such in Russian and in Yiddish, Italian and French, emerging from the forest beneath a trench. When the sun rose the next morning, it was the first of May, and they all sang the Internationale. When the sun rose the next morning, it was the first of May, and they all sang the Internationale. They all sang the Internationale. Falke hört die Signale auf zum letzten Gefecht. Die Internationale erkämpft das Menschenrecht. Falke hört die Signale auf zum letzten Gefecht. Die Internationale erkämpft das Menschenrecht. Thank you for listening, everybody. Uh, I will be back next Wednesday at noon Pacific time, 8 p.m. in Belfast, 9 p.m. in Berlin, 6 a.m. somewhere in Australia. And I will also be, uh, what else? What else do I have to announce? Oh, tomorrow, tomorrow, stopthewar.co.uk, tomorrow at 7 p.m. London time, uh, 11 a.m. here in Portland, I will be doing a couple of songs um, as part of a fundraiser for Stop the War, stopthewar.co.uk. You can get tickets and uh, hang out with me and Jeremy Corbyn and other notable people involved with this fundraiser. And hello, Tayo Aluko. Speaking of notable people, um, I wrote about Tayo in my uh, blog post about my tour if anybody wants to read that it's a recent thing that i wrote it's uh pretty good spent a couple days writing it so hopefully somebody enjoys reading it um what else was i gonna say about upcoming events there's tomorrow and uh yeah otherwise if you're in scandinavia or europe talk to me about february march april or may gigs i'm not going to be there the whole time but i'll be making two trips apparently supposedly if Omicron allows it. And um, yeah, thanks for tuning in and Merry Christmas to everybody who celebrates such things. And um, I'll be back before then, though. I'll be back next week. I'll have a couple more sessions. Maybe I'll do a whole session of Christmas songs, except I only know one, and it's an anti-Christmas song, but maybe I'll learn some others. Did you know that used to be like half of your CD sales were in December. That used to be even true for me. What a strange thought to remember. All right, well, I will just um, tune out now. And um, Oh, this is going to be in podcast form for anybody who's into that sort of thing. It's all, I, all these, I put all these up in podcast form. DavidRovix.com slash this week. You can find that stuff, uh, the podcast, or look for This Week with David Rovix, wherever podcasts are found. All right, everybody, take care. See you soon. Keep on keeping on.